So um, good afternoon um, and thank you for attending today's session. Uh, my name is Shazia Khan. The unit we'll be doing today is Unit 6, which is Strategic Human Resource Management. Um, we, we're doing Learning Outcome 3 today. Um, the last Learning Outcome we looked at was uh, to understand uh, the formulation and in implementation of human resource management strategies. So why it's so important, why we have these strategies in place, why human resource management is so important in regards to, you know, factors that affect it internally, externally. So we looked at that in the last session, which was learning outcome two. Today, we're going to be looking at learning outcome three, which is to be able to critically analyze the use and application of a range of HR strategies designed to improve employee and organizational performance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in 3.1, which is the next slide. Um, we're going to evaluate appropriate hum human resource strategies for um, an organisation. So, you know, um, when we look at human resources, we identify that it's quite an important department within um, within any sort of organisation, isn't it? And, um, you know, we, we look at the fact that, um, you know, that that companies want a good human, res human resource Um they want a good department that deals with, you know, humans. That's the whole point of it. Um, so we're going to be looking at we're looking at determining human resource needs. This is partly heavily involved with strategic plan. Why do you think strategic planning is so important? Pardon? Why do you uh, think? Hello, yes. Sorry, why do you think when we talk about strategic planning, why do you think it's so important? Yeah, strategic planning is uh, very important because all the human sources, uh, uh, strategies on its uh, planning uh, depends. They need to think uh, about the uh, uh, current and uh, future circumstances of yeah. the business. They yeah. need to uh, think about the employees and they need to uh, know about the changes, what they need. Yeah. So that is possible if they have some planning. If they don't have yeah. planning and suddenly yeah. he need to start, then that will be very difficult. Yeah, it's it's so important that you have, you know, HR strategic planning in place because, you know, you have to be there to meet the needs of maybe future needs, you know, in part, you know, like things like you have the organization's going to deliver its product, any sort of services. Yeah deliver so you need to have that framework that plan in place because it guides you doesn't it it guides you to implement any sort of new strategies if you've got any products or uh, mm -hmm. services to deliver so it's literally a guidance for you uh, to try yeah. and you know uh, deliver good products and all those yeah. you know strategies there to create yeah. you know uh, to understand any sort of values or anything of the company Determine yeah. recruitment strategy. That that's a big part of HR recruitment strategy. You know, yeah. um, we need to be able to identify uh, any sort of recruitment that we need, um, any sort of you know um training that we might need for staff. You know, so it's yeah. really important that you know you develop a HR strategy in regards to planning for the future. Um, yeah. select employees. Um, develop any sort of training, which I mentioned, uh, training in regards to, you know, some staff may need more training than others, but as a HR department, you know, you have to be the advocate. You have to make sure you meet the goals of the organisation. Uh, determine compensation and appraisal performance. So any sort of premise, that diagram identifies all the human resource strategies for an organisation. The six parts of HRM plan include the following. So you need to determine human resource needs. And like you said, human resource management is about what? Humans at the end of the day. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and this is partly, part is quite heavy and it's involved with strategic planning. What growth or decline is expected in the organization? How will this impact on the workforce? And what is the economic situation? What are the focus, uh, forecasted sales? For? Why do you think, think it's so important to look at all that, determining human resource needs, look at the strategy, look at the economic situation? Why do you think it's so important? Yeah, because it's, uh, it's important for the development uh, and uh, development of the business of organization. 
So uh, uh, we need to align with uh, the objectives and goals of organization. And uh, it's very important uh, for this strategic plan for this yeah. year. It's, 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 it's really important also because you need to be able to um, identify the future perspectives, don't you, for the organization, whether there is a yeah. future. Yeah. Um, you determine recruitment strategy. So once you have a plan in place, it's necessary to down, write down a strategy uh, addressing how you will recruit the right people at the right time. So, you know, recruitment is really important within a HR organization. You know, you need to be there to identify what kind of people you need for your, um, you know, your organization, you know, whether there's a need to have, you know, a, a director, a manager, you know, you are there to kind of develop the organization by doing this and at the right mm -hmm. time as well. Um, also select employees you the selection process consists of interviewing and hiring process and that's a big part of the HR human resource management mm. develop training like we said developing training why do you think developing training is good why do you the think there's a need to develop training yeah because uh, it is a need of uh, all the organization developing training and improve the skills of uh, employees because Implies are the assets of organizations and yes. yeah. HR especially deal with the uh, uh, humans. So yeah. they should uh, develop training process uh, to understand uh, for the better understanding of the employees. Yeah, and, uh, what their needs the, are. What yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, uh, you know. what they exactly, yeah, what they yeah. need uh, as per uh, the uh, job specification. Yeah. Because it's so important to identify their needs, what needs they have, what, you know, um, if they need, you know, needs maybe like uh, using computers, maybe, you know, IT resources, IT training, maybe any yeah. sort of you know, strategic training. So it's really important that they are, you know, they're there to identify these needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so is like I said, is there any new software that everyone must learn? Are there problems in handling conflict? Whatever the training topics are, the HR manager should uh, address plans to offer um, any sort of training in the HRM plan. Uh, they must also determine compensation. So in this aspect of the HRM plan, the manager must determine pay scales and other compensation such as healthcare bonus and other perks. So, you know, it's important for the manager. You know, do you think he's got quite a big role in this job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very big role because uh, they need to maintain uh, the this one is department. So how yeah. we maintain if we need to know uh, how we can maintain, how how we need uh, these things. To do, we need to determine all these uh, benefits and compensations and uh, uh, legislations uh, to form the policy. So why that's is it, why. Why is legislation so important? Because uh, uh, legislation uh, uh, is uh, very important. The government have some specific uh, 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 legislation about uh, this uh, humans, uh, labor recruitments, uh, and the yeah. working uh, conditions, uh, and the welfare of workings, uh, and uh, yeah. the and, you know, health and, and safety. Health and safety. Yeah, is part yeah. Of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Health and safety and uh, end of services. Uh, uh, yeah. compensations uh, all these uh, uh, the uh, legislation of a uh, country like here in Qatar we need yeah. to follow the uh, MOL Ministry of Labor procedures uh, in Qatar yeah yeah in Qatar yeah yeah so we need to uh, see these all procedures and yeah. these are legislation we need to yeah. follow without following they will put penalty and find maybe closure of the business so oh, that wow. is mandatory when, yeah yeah that is mandatory we need to uh, follow this legislation to wipe really some fines. Yeah, legislation though, because it looks at the human beings, doesn't it? So it protects yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. It's very strict here in Qatar. It's all, all in regards to like human resource management and stuff. Yes, yes. Uh, all other all companies need to follow yeah. the Qatar legislation for yeah. performing activities and for the safety, security of people. Yeah. For the recruitment of people, the, the monthly wages system uh, should be as per the Qatar labor law. So we need to follow certain procedures, uh, legislation. Yeah. 
and the legislation is so important you know you 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 need to look at things like you know that you don't discriminate against anyone you know any sort yeah. of health and safety plans in place any sort of appraisals you know you set yeah. and, and then you have appraised performance and that's like you know sets out the standards need to develop how to rate a performance of your employee so you know yeah. you need to look at their appraisals you need to be able to identify if they're able to you know carry on with that job you know set some standards for them so it's really important when you look at the recruitment process or any sort of issues around the hrm that you look at these things yeah, um yeah, surely yeah in Qatar, is it very say it's very similar in Qatar? Yeah. Is it very strict the human resource management in Qatar? Yeah, it's very strict because strict why it's strict because yeah. uh, we need to follow the legislation, Qatar yeah. legislation. Yeah. So remaining all other activities, we can consider some little up and down, but uh, regarding legislation, we cannot uh, compromise. Yeah. Yes. So then. When we look at the recruitment and selection process, they need to. Uh, it's important to analyze any sort of requirements. Why do you think it's so important when you're recruiting someone to get your requirements in place of what kind of person you want for the job? Yeah, because this is the requirement of the. Actually, what is the procedure here in our company? We have a. Uh, we have a work. So we have a project. So we need to coordinate with the business units, HR team. So yeah. business units is a uh, uh, playing a vital role to perform mm. that activities. So he will give us the exact uh, job specification. What exactly he is looking for? Yeah. So yeah. he will coordinate with HR that suppose he needs uh, ten welders and ten pipe fitters yeah. and ten yeah. masons and carpenter like this. Yeah. So we need uh, to follow these uh, requirements from business yeah. units. Then we can uh, recruit accordingly. So it's yeah, very yeah. important because they need welder and we recruit a masons, suppose. Yeah. So how yeah. how it will work? It will not work. Yeah. It will destroy the business strategy. So you need to you need to get someone uh, who meets the criteria, the job criteria, but also things like you need to screen the client, uh, the the actual yeah. candidate for the job. You need to plan yeah. a recruitment plan. You need to define your requirements. It needs to be really clear that you've got yeah. a welder rather than you know someone who does something else. So you need to meet re your requirements, but also carry out any sort of you know uh, tests on that person. Attract candidates, select your candidates, then you interview them test them and you have an assessment center depends on every organization but this is the the basic recruitment uh, and selection process yeah yeah so recruitment and selection processes are different in different organizations as i've just said different organizations recruit differently okay they have a different selection process and um, and sometimes you know organization add current skills and fill in the gaps um, the steps of recruitment process um, of Tesco, so this is an example, is to identify, um, so someone comes in, they identify the vacancy, the development of the position description, uh, the recruitment plan, so they put a plan together, um, and then they develop a recruitment plan as well, and that's really important. Um, advertising the advertising plan of the recruitment procedure along with the job description is done by um, the help of media. You know, social media, indeed, you have different websites that will advertise your job description, okay? The screening, yeah, yeah. again, is really important. So, again, when we talk about screening, you need to screen uh, the applicant, okay? There's different methods of screening them. So, they provide their CV uh, through email, um, and the, the CVs, uh, according to Dale 2003, are uh, required um, and screened by uh, the individuals in regards to the applicant's skills, what skills are required. Then they will have an interview, and after reviewing the CVs, the selection candidates are in invited for an interview. Interviews conducted through a skills test, and this is just for Tesco, okay, so other places will do it differently. Then yeah, the yeah. candidates are selected on the basis of performance in the skill test. So Tesco considers the skill test, analyze the capability of the client in the job role of frontline staff and practical knowledge. Then after the first interview, they have a second interview if they're successful um, and they're invited for the second interview. And this round is where the interview, uh, they identify the knowledge of the candidate uh, and their behaviors and attitudes compared to organizational culture. So here is where 
they either would be offered the job or not. Um, so if a candidate is successful, they will get a letter. If they are unsuccessful, they will be told that they are unsuccessful, unsuccessful for this position. Yeah, yeah. And that's how Tesco works. So every organisation has its different ways of doing stuff and it meets their needs. It meets the legislation, it meets the requirements. So, you know, they need to make sure they're meeting that legislation as well. The laws in every country are different as well. Each jurisdiction has its own laws. So, you know, um, it, it's really important in regards to this. So 3.2, um, assess human resource strategies and their application in an organisation. So during the 1980s, personal departments were responsible for handing out applications, providing employees with insurance and enrolment forms and processing payroll. The role of personal development was mainly administrative. Over the next several decades, personnel administration became uh, more involved with the overall business goals. Uh, companies began to recruit human resource leaders who were capable of strategic management. Human resources managers are responsible for developing strategic solutions to employment related matters that affect the organization's ability to meet its productivity and performance and goals. Evolving, um, the next slide is evolving terminology and language. So some businesses no longer use the term human resources. They prefer to use the term human capital. Uh, this is due to the sea change in how employees understand their relationship to their employees. Instead of defining employment as a role, which is traditional human resources approach, human capital recognizes the value that employees bring to an organization. And you mentioned that as well, Khurram, that the, the organization would not run without the employees. You know, some yeah. organizations, you know, it's humans at the end of the day and they are the ones doing the work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's why human resources must value its workers. Yes. This approach is more centred, focusing on strengths and talents of employees and allowing the business to, uh, talents and strengths to influence the business. So <clears throat> if a workforce performs, if a workforce performs really well, are they are they meeting the needs of the employers? Employees, sorry. What do you sorry? think if it's if a if an organization is or a business is doing very well, are they meeting the needs of their employees? So their business yeah. profit is going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are yes. So in this case, because it's the business is going up, so they offer the bonuses and rewards yes, to yeah. the employees. Uh, they're, like they're uh, valuing, they're valuing their employees, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're valuing them. They're offering the rewards yes. and the bonuses, and uh, yeah. uh, they're motivating them through this way so yeah. that they keep up and continued uh, with the yeah. best struggle and uh, keep the organization uh, in profit and uh, development of business. Yeah, you know, if you if you inf influencing your employers to do well, then they're not going to leave as well, are they? They're going to keep coming back because you are giving them you know, bonuses and you are respecting them and things like that. It's really yeah, yeah. important that. And you are valuing yeah, yeah. them. That's the main thing. So workplace yes. safety and risk management. So what were you going to say, Khurram? Yeah, the workplace safety and risk management is very important because uh, uh, this is also a part of, a very strict part of a legislation in uh, uh, Qatar government, Ministry of yeah. Labor. Yeah. Uh, if any incident happen. Uh, so it sh uh, must be reported to uh, Qatar uh, um, uh, Police Department. Uh, we need to involve and investigate how it happened. And they some cases, they also put fines. Uh, and injured person should be uh, rewarded with, uh, compensated with the uh, insurance claim. So uh, this is very important because if a lot of uh, incident, accident happens and the uh, people injured and died, uh, then government uh, um, clearly declared that they, they will not award any project to that company. So they also put fines against uh, uh, the companies. Uh, uh, there are a lot of incidents and accidents happens. So this is yeah. very important, uh, uh, in important factors. The companies uh, maintain a safe work platform for the yeah. workers to avoid these uh, problems. Yeah, it's so important to create this working environment, like you said, that has no hazards in place. 
um, you know, and strategic development for workplace safety entails any sort of risk management and mitigating uh, losses for job and any sort of injuries, you know, yeah. they may have occurred. So workers' compensation insurance is really important to have in place. Um, yeah. which strategic plan helps lower company expenses um, and reducing accidents through training employees on the proper use of machinery and, you know, equipment function, how they bend down, how they lift things, you know, this heavy lifting and you need to train people and give them that CPD training as well. Yeah, yeah. So compensation and benefits an employee's compensation and benefit structure partly determines the company's business reputation and image. In addition, the decisions that human resource managers make regarding pay scales and employee benefits can benef uh, can impact employee satisfaction, as well as the organization's ability to recruit talented workers. Job evaluation, labor market conditions, workforce shortages and budget constraints are factors that human resource managers consider in a strategic plan for pay and benefits. The strategy mm -hmm. includes weighing an employee's choices between satisfying its workforce and pleasing the company's stakeholders. So that's yes. really important in regards to that. Um, UK, UK HR legislation um, is that we've got the National Minimum Wage Legislation Act 1998. We've got the Working Time Directive Regulations 1998. We've got the Employment Rights Act 1996, the Pensions Act 2008, and Health and Safety Act at Work 1974. Data Protection of um, Act 1998 and the General Data Protection Regulations, GDPR, because that's really important when you talk about HRM, you know, human resource management. Why do you think it's so important, um, data protection? Data prote protection is very important because if the, your employee, the company employee died, so he's obviously uh, a source of income for his family. So um, there should be uh, death compensation. So yeah. that minimum, uh, the family but can data, feed. data protection, yeah. you know, is trying to protect uh, somebody's data. Their, you know, their name, their address. Ah, data. Like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, data protection yeah. is very important as well. Uh, and it's a legislation in government. Confidentially yeah. protect the data here in Qatar and UK. Uh, there's yeah. legislation about this one. So yeah. don't disclose the uh, confidential yeah. data. No. So, no. um, because uh, for anybody, uh, for any kind of person, yeah. you know, you need to protect their data. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Employee training and development again, a big part of human resource managers' strategic role with respect to employees' training and development, preparing the workforce for future positions within the company. So, things like you know, you give them training on GDPR, you give them training on you know, um, things like respect. You give them training yeah. on lifting. You know, if you work in a big construction firm, you give them yeah. uh, training on lifting, health and safety, GDPR, you know, any sort of conditions that may uh, inflict on their working, you should be giving them training because the HRM department uh, is popular for giving training. And to, you know, improve someone's development, you know, CPD, if you improve their development, they're able to work their way up and apply for more jobs. Uh, succession planning, so promotion from within policies and performance evaluation factor in human resource managers, training and development motivate employees and in some cases improve employee retention. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, recruitment and selection, so employee recruitment and selection is as much a part of employee relations as it is separate discipline in itself. Therefore, the human resource manager's strategic role is to combine elements of employee relations in the employee's recruitment and selection strategy. And that's really important, you know, how to recruit someone, what's the strategy you must have in place, what kind of person you need, uh, any sort of programs you want to integrate, uh, integration employee programs, promotions, you know, um, and this motivates employers as well to do better yeah yeah employer employee relationships and this is a really important part of any sort of um organization if you have a good relationship with your manager or if you have a good relationship with your workers or anything like that it strengthens the um employee employee relationship why do you think it's so important Khurram, to have a good relationship with your employees 
Yeah, actually, um, um, obviously, if we the employer have a good relation with the employees, so the, it will uh, boost uh, employee in courage as well. Uh, so he will work uh, in good way. And uh, if any problem, he can easily escalate uh, with the, uh, the through this relation. Yeah. So through and do you this way, a, do you think there's a need to have this relationship? Yeah, it should be because uh, uh, through this way. Uh, uh, we can sort out of a lot of uh, problems uh, of implies and pride remains happy and they work uh, with his courage and uh, yeah emotions. he will he will also be happy you know um you know it strengthens that relationship on the hr department and nevertheless employee relations is such a large part of every discipline including salaries benefits safety training and employee development that sustain an employee's relation program it's important element of the human loss management um you know implementing a workplace investigation process and enforcing fair employment practices are two components of an employee employee's relationship the strategic role of a human resource manager is to determine how to identify and resolve workplace issues as you've just said and, um, you know, it's really, and to have that effective communication, you know, is really good, isn't it? Because that fosters a positive work culture. You know, you will work better, won't you? Uh, yeah. it, the, the work culture between you and the employer will be better. There will be, you know, um, aspects of, you know, mutual respect. There will be trust between you and there will be some form of collaboration between you as well. So, you know, yeah. the, the, it's really important that the employer employee relationship is um is the most important it's quite symbolic uh between an organization and its workforce um, yeah. and and you know it's it's a professional it could be a professional thing you know that you are the manager but you know you have that boundary as well don't you you would put a boundary between that you yeah. know have mutual expectations between each other each other commitment is a crucial part of the relationships you know, communication, effective communication is so important in an employee-employee relationship. Why do you think communication yeah. is so important? Yeah, communication is very important to know all these uh, circumstances, uh, um, uh, either directly with the employees uh, or uh, we should... Uh, Suggest the uh, complaint box or suggestion box. Uh, yeah, or yeah. There are a lot of uh, way to communicate with employee. So communication yeah. is very important to communicate with employee to know about uh, the employee uh, mentality and uh, uh, yeah. to make some strategies and uh, about this. Uh, yeah, because employers, if you're an employer, you should make it clear to your employee what your job expectations are. You yeah. know, you should give them feedback on their performance. You should also yes. give them opportunities uh, for employees to, you know, voice any concerns. Like you said, the concern box is really yeah. important, you know, that box. Uh, yeah. Also, employees should communicate uh, openly. They should communicate openly with you. And, you know, if there's any sort of challenges, any problems they're having, or any sort of, you know, needs they need, any training needs, they should be able to communicate that with you. Um, and, you yeah. know, employees must trust employees to perform their duties. Uh, you know, you should respect each other and have that trust. Yeah. You know, you, you should have boundaries in place at the start that, you know, you don't overstep that boundary. Yes. You know, it's crucial that you don't overstep that boundary because that relationship, you know, you should... It, if you have that relationship, it also enhances job satisfaction the employer will want to come and work more you yeah know, they, they'll be happy you know you you should be able to talk about their health their well-being you know you should be able to uh you know create this workforce that's quite harmonious you know fostering like employee satisfaction so it's really important that you know you have this nurturing kind of relationship not too nurturing because you know um it's the that is mainly when you look at employers and employee it's mainly the cornerstone of every job market um yeah. and when you have an employee it, if you have a strong relationship the uh, company benefits from that yeah uh, like you said providing bonuses uh you know giving them vouchers 
having a work yeah. life balance, you know, providing them with gym membership, things like that. You know, if you provide that kind of stuff for your employee, they're going to want to come back and keep coming back. Also things yeah, like, yeah. you know, professional, professional development, offering them training courses. You know, I know yeah. some organizations that don't offer training courses for their employees. Yeah. You know, it's really important. Why do you need to offer this training, CPD, or any sort of training courses? Yeah, because it's uh, very important to boost the knowledge of uh, the employee, and yeah. uh, he he will work uh, he will work uh, for the better development, and yeah. uh, through this uh, knowledge, he can make best strategies uh, after having a good knowledge. So these trainings yeah. are very important, uh, uh, like uh, we should do. Yeah. Every every organization should do that. Yeah, so yeah. we finished learning outcome three now. Okay, so some of these are the resources for learning outcome three. Do you have yeah. any questions? No, I don't have a question. Are Mostly you sure? it's explained well. These are, yeah, some, sure. these are some of the resources that you can look at in your own time in regards to when you're doing your assignment. Also go on to Moodle. There's additional resources on there that may be yeah. able to, you can read. So go on to these additional sources and things on Moodle because that will help you. The next session, if you haven't got any questions, the next session we've got is Learning Outcome 4, yeah. uh, which is tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow then, we can do. Then uh, next got, Friday, we'll, yeah. Yeah, we've got tomorrow, which is the learning outcome four. And then next week, we've got the assignment discussion. Yeah, 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 surely. Okay. Yeah, Have you yeah, got any okay. questions for them? No, no, it's okay. Nice uh, explained uh, by oh, you. Oh, thank you. And nice. I, I... Uh, it's a nice uh, session because I can ask you questions and we can interact with each other. So it helps. It really does help. Thank you for mm -hmm. attending today's session. And it's lovely teaching you. Okay. And I'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, have a Thank nice you. day, okay? Okay, okay then. Okay. Bye.